System design understanding is really important. A bad design can cost millions of dollars, time and performance. That's why system design questions are quite common in the interview process in most top companies like Google, Facebook and others. A system design interview round will often only involve one or two big questions in which the interviewer will ask to design a particular system that usually already exists and have a deep dive discussion on system design fundamentals. A great performance in system design interviews is highly reflected upon your ability to work with complex, large, scalable systems. My name is Kamal Sharma and today we will talk about the concepts of system design interview questions. First we will talk about the interviewer's mindset behind these questions which means why such questions are being asked. Then we'll see how can we divide a complex design process in multiple smaller steps. Why system design interview questions? The goal of such questions is to check your problem solving ability on a complex problem. It is quite understandable that you might not have experience to design such big applications, but proposing the best possible solutions would show your understanding about design fundamentals. Interviewer wants to see if you consider common distributed system challenges in your design, like distributing the data to multiple machines and aggregating them together later and equally distributing the load on multiple servers. It is also quite interesting to see your design approach when user throughput increase. System design questions are quite open-ended and there is no standard answer for such questions. They want to see that you think about operational scenarios, edge cases, limitations and assumptions. Interviewer can decide whatever directions the discussion will go to. With that in mind, even for the same question, you may have completely different discussion with a different interviewer. Now we will talk how the entire design can be divided into multiple steps. Requirements. This step is very crucial. When interviewer asks to design an application, just don't start immediately. Gather the requirements and understand the exact scope of the application because a single application can have many features and each feature can have its own complexity. So it's better not to assume any Thing, ask the interviewer what he's trying to build and what the end goal of the application is. Normally interviewers intentionally don't reveal all the details because they want to see how you understand requirements. The better you define scope and understand requirements, your chances would increase to be successful in the design process. This is also important because of time limitation. Generally interview happens to be of 60 minutes. If we divide this time, first 10 minutes would be spent in general introduction and the last 10 to 15 minutes interviewer would review the design and discuss the design challenges and fundamentals. So moreover, you would have maximum 35 to 40 minutes where you need to understand the requirements, design the application and review all the bottlenecks before showing it to interviewer. So you have to be very sure whatever you are trying to design. We can even ask the interviewer if he wants you to focus on any specific part of the design. Requirements can be of two types, functional and non-functional. Functional requirements are basically application features, means what are you trying to build. For example, if we design a video streaming application like YouTube, then functional requirements can look like users should be able to upload and watch videos, search videos, like, dislike or add or view comments on videos. While non-functional requirements are hidden requirements that are generally not told to you. Such requirements are like a system should be highly reliable, very much scalable, if load increased, fault tolerant, eventual or strong consistent. These are non-functional but very important. The next step is system capacity estimation. As I said earlier, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Because if you can't measure something and know the results, you can't possibly get better at it. So estimation is important because it will give you a brief idea about the infrastructure needs. This kind of estimation is called back of an envelope estimation. This step is also important because here you will define a boundary for your system capacity in a way that if your application becomes popular, then it should be able to handle the load or at least you should be able to know how much load the application can handle. Since you don't have any real numbers during designing, so you can make some assumptions and based on those assumptions, you can calculate all the different estimations. There would be a lot of estimation calculations required. So taking any random number would consume more time. So you can use some of the most common assumptions that people use in such use cases and that would help you to calculate very quickly. Here, one more thing I want to point out is that we are not attempting a mathematics exam. So we don't need to completely correct in calculations. Try to round up the number for example, 70 multiplied by 70 is 4900. But to calculate quickly, we can make it 5000. So try to round up the number. If you need to multiply by two years, then instead of 730 days, you can make it 800 days. Just make calculations simple with approximation. Let's talk about some of the common assumptions. These assumptions would help you to assume and calculate quickly. Here, some of the common storage assumptions can be used for name, email ID, social media post, image and videos. Similarly, to assume 
number of users you can consider some common use cases for example we can assume 1 billion total users and 800 millions of daily active users for an application like youtube a general practice estimation can be done on multiple aspects like scaling storage and network scaling estimation would answer about per day or per second traffic on application and storage estimation would tell us how much storage we would need every day network estimation would answer about requirements of ingress and egress bandwidth using this estimation we can have a brief detail about future expenditure which means if we are expecting 5 to 10 percent increase in user base every year then how much infrastructure we would need in coming years after putting your assumptions always verify with the interviewer if they want to adjust assumptions with what they have in mind this shows that you are doing cross verification and willing to adjust scale per actual need the third step is apis defining apis early would clear your understanding for the system design requirements it will also help you for data modeling we can have soap or rest apis to expose the functionality of our service as you talk about video streaming application in our requirement step so we can define our apis prototype according to the features like upload stream and search videos along with requirement parameters and written types now next step is data modeling data modeling is very crucial step your application requirements would decide which type of database you are going to use i mean sql no sql or any event driven solution a few factors that can be helpful to take the decision if application is read heavy and we are planning to store billions of data objects and we don't need to use any relationship between objects then a NoSQL database like DynamoDB, Cassandra can be a good option or for an event driven system we can use Kafka or PubSub if you are looking for a strong consistent or relational database then we can use a SQL type database sometimes cost also can play an important role to decide the database type here another important part is how you are going to partition your data so need to understand the requirements that would help you to divide application data on multiple servers next step is high level design high level design is a general system design it provides a view of system at an abstract level it shows how the major pieces of an application will fit together and communicate with each other its main goal is to convert business requirements to high level solution it mentions all the platforms systems services database and processes that product would depend on it establishes relationships between system modules and system features some major components that are generally used in high level designs are users application web servers load balancers database file system and cache these are the major components that we will use in high level design low level design this is component level design since we are working on a very popular platform or at least expected to be popular with really heavy traffic so each component design is itself a big project so interviewers feedback would help us to pick any specific component and explain all the best way to design that component as i stated earlier there is nothing like wrong design you should know why you choose one approach on the other or what are the trade-offs for different approaches there are a few important terms we always need to keep in mind in the low level design process like data partitioning consistent hashing load balancing and fault tolerance the last step is system limitations and questions this is the last part of your interview and mostly would decide the fate of the interview round interviewer would review the design and it's your time to use your wisdom of system designing these questions are very common if you are aware about different types of system bottlenecks interviewer can ask a few questions like how database read and write load would be handled means how to implement data partitioning and load balancing which database is best for the current design which data structure would be used means tree link list arrays interviewer also can ask if system is fault tolerant or not if it is not then how it can be achieved some questions can be what would be your approach for better system availability and security if you are using cache in the application then it can be asked that how to read write and refresh the system cache so well prepare for these concepts a few things I would like to suggest that can be helpful for the system design interview process. Talk to interviewer while you draw the diagram. That way you will be more in sync with interviewer and if you are going out of scope then the interviewer can correct you. Draw diagrams with simple boxes. The most effective diagrams are the ones that clearly explains your vision with minimal ambiguity. Your focus should be on simplicity, thoroughness and cleanliness. The interviewer and potentially others who review your interviewer later might not be able to understand the diagram fully or worse misunderstood it otherwise. It is said it takes a deep understanding of something to explain simply. So it is up to you how effectively you can communicate your ideas and convince the interviewer. 
check different big data platforms and see what type of problems they solve and understand the bottleneck of existing systems. Understand design fundamentals and key concepts. See how data partitioning and load balancing is performed and how to read data from partitioning tables. You can also check SQL, NoSQL and some cloud-based databases, their specifications that will help you to decide best possible database for your use case. It would be great if you find out best practices for different type of tree, graph, linked list and other data structures. These were the 7 steps to attempt a system design interview. In the next video, we will talk about designing a video streaming platform YouTube. Thanks for watching.